Good morning, I'm John Wendell from Charlotte Mecklenburg Stormwater Services. This is a real tough time for everybody. Everybody is at home, social distancing, uh, keeping inside. Kids are away from school, missing their teachers, missing their friends. You know, parents are at home doing the tele, uh, teleworking thing, and, and it's just a little difficult. Well, we'd like to bring you a little demonstration, talk to you about Water Wednesday. This is where Charlotte Mecklenburg Stormwater Services produces a little demonstration, a little something that talks about water and in your area. Last week we had a great read. It was, uh, what was the name of this uh, book? All the Way to the Ocean. All the Way to the Ocean, following water from the mountains all the way down to the ocean. Kind of cool. It's great for young kids. Well, this demonstration is more of a 6 to 12 year old kind of demonstration, but I think the youngest kids, the little kids, may like this as well. Maybe you older kids, maybe you parents would like to see it as well and learn a little bit. So, you know, first time I did it, I learned a lot too. But uh, this is our, our uh, floodplain model. And what we're going to demonstrate is water falling from the sky and how it gets into our streams and how it's important that we have less impervious surfaces. Impervious is ground that's hard where the water doesn't seep in and it flows straight into our creeks and streams. Well, the more of that that we have, there's going to be more water that goes into our creeks and streams. So let's get started. Let me explain what's going on here. First of all, as we zoom down into our storm, uh, our floodplain model, what do we see? We see a little creek here and we have some houses and some trees around. These houses are built on different levels. This is an area that's low, very near the creek. That's in our floodplain. You go up a little bit higher, there's a few more houses, and even higher than that, there are more houses. So what do we see here? What do you think is going to happen? If there's a flood, which houses are going to be affected first? Most likely, these houses that are near the stream. Well, let me show you how I... All right, over to the right here, probably your left, I don't know, is that to your left? Okay, <laughs> it's to my right. Um, this is like a wetlands. It's, it's uh, maybe a grassy area, a farm or something like that. And when water, when rain falls onto that wetland, uh, falls into, onto that farm, what do you think happens? That rain soaks into the ground. So what I did here is added this little piece of plastic. It has holes, and as the water goes through those holes, it represents the rain, and it falls into this uh, watershed where the, the ground is, gets saturated. The water flows into there, and you can see very little flow goes into our stream. Very good. But all these people here, all these people here need something. They need maybe need groceries. They maybe need going to the uh, pharmacy to get some medication. Uh, maybe they need to go to the gas station. So what do we do? We take this wetland, we take these farms, and we, we add a parking lot. And in that parking lot, in that area, we add, it's kind of stuck here, we add buildings, we add parking lots with cars, but when it does rain, what happens? This impervious surface is not going to let the water flow into the ground. That water then is going to flow into our creeks. So let's bring our piece of plastic back with the holes in it, and then let's add a little bit of rain. What do you see happening? All that water is flowing off that dry, uh, parking lot and into our streams. And if it rains too heavy, where is that water going? It flows into our floodplain. And in this case, you can see this tree, it's washed away. These houses are now covered with water. And as the water comes through. 
So that's the difference between having some ground that has an impervious surface, like this parking lot, with the buildings and the cars, as compared to having a wetland or maybe a farm. That's a big difference. So as you can see, these houses actually moved a little bit because of the flood that we had. But the water stayed in this floodplain. Again, remember, floodplains are meant to flood. Floodplains naturally flood. That's where the excess water goes when the water gets too high for the stream. So it flooded into this area. So one thing we'd like to do is remove homes. We'd like to buy homes that are in the floodplain that are in danger, that are high risk for flooding, and move them out of the floodplain. That's one way we can uh, do that. Let's see, that house actually was tipped over. So if we can move those houses, that's even better. So you got that so far. What can we do if we already have a parking lot? We already have a uh, mall or something like that. There are little things we could do. And one thing we could do. Well, there you go. In this demonstration is we can add a pond. All right, there's our pond. And then here's the parking lot that we have, our mall. And we put the pond between the parking lot and the creek. So the water that goes into the parking lot is going to go into the pond before it goes into the creek. It's going to slow the water down from going into that creek and we get less flooding. All right, you ready for the example? Let's take our piece of plastic that has the holes that produces our rain, right? We add a thunderstorm, heavy rains. You know those, there's the thunder, here comes the rain. I'm putting in just the same amount of water I did with the last rain event. Remember where we had the flooding? This is the same amount of water. But notice all the water that's running off the parking lot is now going into the pond first. And it slowly goes into the creek. And therefore, less flooding. If you have any comments or any questions, go ahead and type those in. I'll see if I can answer them for you uh, before we end this demonstration. But you can see how all that water came off that impervious surface. Remember, that's going to be one of the questions I'm going to have right at the end for you. What's an impervious surface? But all that water comes off of that parking lot, goes into the pond before it goes into the creek. And what happens? There was no flooding along that creek. So it's actually something we could do to really help out. So there's two things we can do to really help out if we have this creek and floodplain and heavy rains expected. And we've been seeing a lot of thunderstorms that have been producing some very heavy rainfall in the past couple of years. But two things we could do is remove some of the homes that are in those floodplains. And then the other thing we could do is put something, a, a, a buffer, in between um, the parking lot and the creek. And in this case, we put a pond. It slowed the water down from going in to that creek and stream. So that's very important. Sometimes, where's that one tree that... This little tree was here, and when the floods came by, it got caught in the stream. A lot of times that does happen, and it blocks the water from going through. And if you see that, you want to call 311 to report any blockages here in Mecklenburg County, um, just because that's going to slow the water down, it's going to back the water up, and then we get actually more flooding because of that. So if you see trees down in the creeks and streams, slowing the water down, making a blockage where debris is collecting against it, 311 is the place to call if, if that does happen. Um, if, is there any questions or comments so far? I don't see any um, questions right All as right. of yet. If anybody else does have any, send them here and I'll let John know and we'll get your questions yeah. answered. You know, even if you're watching this is two or three days later, if you have a comment or something, put it in there and I'll get to it. I'll answer it as best I can. It's just a little easier this way because we're live right now. And it'd be easier just to answer the questions instead of having me going in and typing it all. But uh, 
you know, it, it's, 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 it's kind of a crazy time uh, we're, that we're going through and a lot of people with our social distancing and we, we need to keep busy, make the time go by a little bit faster. And on these Water Wednesdays, I think it's really important to learn a little bit. And this is Charlotte Mecklenburg Stormwater Services way to uh, teach the kids, uh, teach baby adults uh, the importance of watching our waterways, how important it is. So the question I have for you, I got maybe two or three questions. What's an impervious surface? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, impervious surface. That's a surface that is not letting water seep through. It's hard, like cement, asphalt, your parking lots, things like that, where the water, where the rain falls onto that surface and then washes out and it goes into our storm drains and it goes directly into our creeks and streams. So the more impervious surfaces that we have, meaning more parking lots, meaning more roads, things like that, more water goes into our creeks and streams. So we have to be prepared for that. Um, what's one way that we could, two ways, okay, there's a question. What are two ways we could mitigate some of the high water that we go into our, our uh, floodplains and into our creeks and streams and cause less damage? Well, one way we could do, we could take out homes that are in the floodplain. Take that house out. That means a less riskier uh, area. Homes aren't going to be damaged. People who live in those homes and don't have to be saved by the floodwaters. And the other thing is, is maybe putting a pond in between the parking lot and then the creek, just to slow that flow of water down that's going into the creek and the stream. So those are some of the questions that uh, uh, I'm, I kind of ask when, when I do the floodplain demonstration. So if you have other questions you'd like me to answer for you, just let me know. Put it at the bottom there in the comment section, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Uh, coming up next Wednesday on Water Wednesday, we are going to do the Enviroscape model and what the Enviroscape model is it basically shows you where pollution goes when it goes into our creeks and our streams in our area right is that what it goes That's yep and it'll teach you all of the different pollutants that are involved and can get into our streams there you go and you want to see that again wednesday next wednesday that's the 15th tax day right i think it is that's right tax day tax day the 15th it's not tax day anymore because that's been pushed back because of the coronavirus but the old tax day of April 15th at 10 a.m. Catch us on Facebook Live. And again, if you want to see last week's, just scroll down on the Facebook page there and it will be there for you to look at. So have a great day. Stay at home. Don't, don't uh, mingle with other people. Social distance with everybody. Get outside. Maybe do a little exercising away from everybody else. Take the dog out for a walk. And if you do, remember, scoop 